Today we're going to be looking at a channel called Electro Boom. <laughs> Specifically this video here where he makes a homemade particle detector or cloud chamber. That's cool. But in case you don't know me, I'm Tyler Fols. I'm a nuclear engineer with a little over 10 years of experience in the commercial nuclear power industry, from engineering to operations to emergency response. I don't claim to know everything there is nuclear, but I can certainly share some knowledge. Let's get right into it. I'd like to show you how to make a particle detector so in case of a nuclear disaster, you can see with your own eyes the amount of radiation you are receiving before your body melts. <laughs> before your body melts, hmm, this is an interesting thing. Can your body actually melt from radiation? Well, if it could, you'd be able to see it and feel it right away. Any Anything hot enough to melt you, well, you're... There's kind of not a whole lot you can do about it at that point. But most ionizing radiation will not actually melt you. Even people that get acute doses of radiation, none of the, none of the hazard is melting. What kills you is arguably more horrific. Acute radiation syndrome will give you some nasty, nasty symptoms. First, there's burns, depending on what it is. So picture sunburns, which are actually a form of radiation burn, but way, way worse. They're going to affect bits of your skin. All kinds of internal cell damage. Your cells simply won't be able to heal right because it damages the DNA within them. And a lot of internal hemorrhaging, bleeding from the inside out, at, it, at the worst case, um, acute radiation syndrome. Th those are the worst. Of course, it's going to have other things such as nausea, vomiting. Um, there may, there's even a period of time where you actually feel a little better before things get much, much worse. So arguably more horrific than the melting that he's talking about. So more reasons why you need to know how to detect radiation. <laughs> <laughs> ah, just joking. This device is a fun project to help you observe the radiations and particles we are bombarded with every day from the universe. In case of a nuclear disaster, your body melting would be a good enough indicator. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, so nu nuclear disaster. Yeah, uh, your body could melt if you get hit. In if you're in the initial fireball from a nuclear bomb, there's not going to be anything left of you. <laughs> you wouldn't. You wouldn't experience anything would be too quick this device is called the cloud chamber originally designed by charles mans uh, williams <laughs> i was gonna say what <laughs> wilson basically it's a glass container with a super cold surface on the bottom that contains alcohol vapor the vapor creates a thin layer of cloud over the cold surface which is our detector let's make it then i'll explain later I've never made it before, but I know how it works, okay? So hopefully it won't fail badly. The reason why you want it cold is you want to get it to the point where the S is super saturated, which basically means it's colder than it should be, considering that it's still a gas. And it makes it easier to see the ions that form because this is ionizing radiation. It means it pulls electrons off of atoms, so you can see it. That's also how it attacks the body as it hits your, uh, your DNA strands, and that's not exactly good for them. In a non-extreme non scenario, unlike the, one, the scenarios I talked about earlier, um, if you absorb too much radiation, you can be at increased risk of cancer over time. The problem I have with this is that with my inefficient fan cooling system, I can only cool the surface down to 5 to 3 degrees Celsius, while according to Wikipedia, I need cooler than minus 26 degrees. See, when we apply a DC voltage across a Peltier device, which is this white piece attached to the heat sink, it creates a temperature difference between its two surfaces up to like 60 degrees Celsius. Okay. Now if we cool down the hot surface, with the same temperature difference between the two surfaces, the cold surface can be freezing. But with my fan, I can only cool the hot surface to around 50 to 60 degrees Celsius, and so the cold surface comes close to zero. But I have a plan. I'll create a container filled with water and put the heat sink in it and freeze the water. With the ice water at zero degrees, my surface could go down to minus 50 degrees, hopefully. 
I cre okay. And so, yeah, the, the whole point is to make it cold enough so you enter that condition that it's easier to see those clouds so you can see the uh, ionizing radiation. The container using this wooden panel, which should also help with thermal insulation. I don't want to make a sawdust mess in my room again. I wonder if I can cut it with my knife. <laughs> that is very close to put your fingers to the blade, buddy. <laughs> getting nervous for me cutting towards my face yes <laughs> you should you must never cut towards your body parts slap like on this video if you agree all right i'm gonna go ahead and slap like on this video <laughs> i like this guy already let's see if cutting it with a knife helped at all nope i have to use a saw Okay, so if you thought the knife was dead, let's go ahead and add a larger, clunkier piece of equipment and that has a blade that is mechanized, so we're just going to amplify this little risk a little bit more. <laughs> wow. Now I will make a clear container using plexiglass. <laughs> this is pretty funny. <laughs> uh, I got recommend recommendations for this guy on some of my Styropyro videos, so I can understand why. <laughs> Beautiful. Now I will glue them together using some two-part epoxy. I did bad glue job. The surface is dirty with glue. Never remove the protective layer until the glue is dry. Maybe I can clean it a bit better after the glue dries. For now, let's silicone. I add more silicone around the whole thing to insulate it better from the outside world. And also put some silicone on the edge of the surface. And then I add some soap to the edge of the glass so it doesn't stick to the silicone. And then I push the glass on top of the silicone and let it dry. The silicone should provide a good seal to prevent the air from escaping. Now we peel this off. Not bad, but I don't know if this seal was necessary. Now we cut some sponge in half and sprinkle some resistors in the groove. See, I put three 1.2 kilo ohm resistors in series and I'll place them in this cut I made in the foam. And I'll run the system between 24 and 30 volts and these resistors will create some heat that vaporizes the alcohol. Smash like. Now, <laughs> I solder the two foams in parallel and now we hot glue our foams in the glass. I ran out of proper size glue sticks for my hot glue gun. Now, we need some light. But the problem is that this string runs on 12 volt. The good thing about these string lights is that you can cut them along these lines and they continue being functional like an earthworm. So we cut two pieces the length we need. Every piece is still functional at 12 volts. Now we just solder them in series and they'll work at 24 volt. And now we glue our lights to the side of the glass right at the bottom, like this. Now when we turn on the light, it will illuminate the mist created on the cold surface. Cool. Oh man, what the f happened here? Why is it <laughs> peeled off? Did water get under there and ice up or? Okay, now that we are waiting for the big one to freeze, I froze my single module in water and let's see if it can actually go that low of a temperature. See. I will run it at uh, 10 volts, which I want to do for the big module, and the temperature reading here is in degrees Celsius, which is zero right now. Let's power it up. Look at it go. <laughs> no, minus well, it's cooler than minus 26 that we need, and it's probably colder. My thermocouple is not making a good contact. Let's go to maximum 12 volt. Well, that didn't make much of a difference. Dude, no, no. <laughs> mm, 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 mm. Ah, ah, ah. Well, the result is not super promising. It's kind of marginal. The number I had in my head for these was minus 35 Celsius, but we'll see if that's enough. 
especially with my bigger broken plate. As soon as the water melts and heats up, the temperature rises too. So I then again, most designs I'm thinking of use dry ice or something colder. Only a few minutes. Especially when the ice melts around the heat sink, it makes a good insulator to the ice and its temperature rises. And you see that the temperature doesn't fall as low as we expect it to. Not nice. Well, whatever, <laughs> nice. let's try it. I'll soak the foams in alcohol, power it up, and now we wait. <laughs> I created the mist. <laughs> yeah? It's detecting nothing though. Not a single particle is passing through my detector. Or maybe it's because it's not cold enough. I think it's the cold. Or maybe I'm blind. Oh, I saw something. Okay, yeah, uh, it's very faint. Um, usually if they're, they're a little bigger than that, but the whole mechanism behind how this works is when radiation, let's just say, let's just say it's an alpha particle, so a helium nucleus, enters the chamber, it's gonna leave behind a trail of ions because it's ionizing radiation. Ions are just little bitty charged particles. And again, we're super saturated here, so these ions act as little seeds for the gas to condense on. And as the gas condenses on these ions, it forms these little droplets that, that you see right there. This is the same sort of phenomena when it's cold outside and you breathe and you see just a little bit of, uh, little bit of moisture and these little clouds come out of your mouth. It's the exact same concept. I, 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 oh, there it is, I saw it. Oh yeah, there, there, I saw it. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> I can see them, they are so dim, but I can see them. I bet it would work better if it was cooler. Oh, look at that, it's beautiful. It's subtle, but it's there. <laughs> it was enough. Wow, that was big. See, there are three particles, alpha, beta, and gamma, and the biggest ones, look at that, look at that, which are two protons and two neutrons. That's the heaviest part, these particles. So, the re so yeah, the alphas are gonna show up bigger than the betas and the gammas in that order. And a couple of reasons for that. So alphas have two charge, two positive charges, so it's gonna be taking some electrons off. And then betas, it's, it's negative charge and there's just one of them. So that's why it's it's not as big. Gammas are a little different and they, they look a little different on the, uh, because there it's pure energy, just light, but the light is intense enough in terms of energy and short wavelength that its presence is going to ionize the air. It's a much longer range, but it's a lot more subtle. So you don't really see gammas as well on even a really cold cloud chamber, at least compared to alphas and betas. From nuclear reactions and radiations from material around us and from space, sun, and cosmos. And they are ionizing, yep. so they could cause cancer. Background radiation, um, no. Uh, the most commonly accepted uh, theory for dose is the linear threshold model. And that uh, increase in cancer risk is above 100 millisieverts. And to get a sense of that, on average, that's about two millisieverts per year. So not nearly enough to, uh, to cause cancer. Um, you would have to get other sources of radiation. Shouldn't be smiling for that. Well, no. their natural amount is so small, they wouldn't cause a problem, unless you're exposed to much more levels of radiation that would break your DNA and cause cancer. Yep. When those particles pass through the alcohol vapor, they excite the vapor molecules, the molecules stick together and condense into a much thicker cloud that we can see. Okay, let's try again. This time I refroze the water with some salt in it, so hopefully it can stay colder longer. And now we wait. I can see the mist clearly. Seems it takes so long to start detecting something. <laughs> there, that was it. Now I want to try something. I've heard bananas are radioactive, so... They absolutely are. There's even its own unit, the banana equivalent dose. Uh, one banana equivalent dose is 0.1 microsieverts. So not very much. That's how much dose you get from eating it, by the way. Maybe they provide more alpha particles? No, potassium-40 um, is a beta emitter. Hmm, I don't see much of a difference. Betas are a bit more subtle. 
Good. So we can conclude that bananas are safe to eat. <laughs> we know that smoke detectors contain dangerous radioactive material. Let's see if they affect our reading at all. This now that's going to be alpha, but you're going to need to take it out of its little protective casing because alphas are very short range. So it might be quite shielded though. Let's see. Yep. That's not going to make it through the glass. Too bad, they might have shielded it pretty well, so I can't see anything there either. But if we were to take the radioactive stuff out of it, you would- That's cool. Yep, yeah, that's, that's exactly the sort of thing that you see. And it's, you typically see a lot of alphas and bays, and the gammas are like super thin. But it's really cool to look at. Clearly see the lines jumping out of it. Well, it definitely works. Although my cooling surface is <laughs> that it gets super cold and is broken. <laughs> But it's another success story in my books. With a proper cooling system and something to cycle alcohol, this would work phenomenally. I guess exactly like the commercial ones they sell out there. Well, I was curious if I could build it, and I did. <laughs> I love curiosity. You did? You got results. I love that guy's energy. Uh, man, it's my first time uh, watching him. Love that, that enthusiasm, can do, spirit. Uh, I love it. That's really cool, and, and it's doesn't look particularly complicated and yeah there's really not a whole lot to it as far as uh cloud chambers are concerned i've never seen one just by sticking something in a freezer though that's uh that's pretty cool i would have thought you had to use dry ice or something even colder let me know if you want me to see any more of electro booms videos or if you have any other uh recommendations out there i i really appreciate the introduction to his channel thank you very much for watching i'll see you next time